This is Kim Spitty from 10 Sigma. Welcome to episode 68 of Transition Tuesday. Today I'm going to be talking about going beyond transition compliance. This was a topic suggestion from Greg in Wisconsin. Right now I'm going to switch over to a short slide presentation to share some information. Before getting into how to go beyond transition compliance, we need to think about two questions. What does transition really mean for our students? Or we could even say, what is the purpose of K-12 education? And the second question, does just filling out the IEP transition paperwork help our students make a successful transition to adult life? Or is the IEP just meant to be the outline or framework to guide the IEP team in the transition process? Let's start with the first question. What does transition mean specifically for special education students? Transition means the process for preparing students for life after high school. It means planning for post-secondary education or training, employment, and independent living. And it is also a required component in IDEA. If you look at two of the parts of what transition really means, the process for preparing students for life after high school and the planning for post-secondary education or training, employment, and independent living, these are also the purpose of K-12 education. The only thing that is different is that transition is required in IDEA. My point in saying this is, even though compliance is important, educators need to go beyond compliance and focus equally on the big picture, which is helping students be as successful as possible in their adult life. And in order to do that, we need to help them plan and prepare. Just as academic subjects are taught across grade levels, transition skills should also be taught across grade levels. The federal government requires transition planning to begin when the student is 16. Most states start when the student is 14. Ideally, it should begin earlier to give the students more time to learn important life skills. Remember that earning a high school diploma could be one of the goals in the transition plan, but it is not the entire transition plan. The IEP is a guide and should be referred to often by the IEP team, including the student. Ongoing conversations, assessments, and planning are required to help students to develop an effective plan for life after high school. Let's look at transition assessment as an ongoing process and not just right before the student's IEP meeting. There are informal assessments and formal assessments. Transition assessments collect information about behavior, interests, wants and dreams, working styles, personality preferences, likes and dislikes, self-determination, self-advocacy, the student's strengths, readiness and skill needs, learning styles, aptitude and achievement. These assessments can be done in a variety of ways, online, paper pencil, and through conversations. The important thing is to think about what the student needs to explore and then learn for life after high school. Students' dreams, needs, abilities, and preferences change as they learn new skills and are exposed to new ideas. It's important for the assessment process to be ongoing to provide information about the student's current level of functioning. This should be reflected in the present levels of the Academic Achievement and Functional Performance section of the IEP. Here's an example of a present level of performance. Since she was 12, Brittany has told her IEP team that she wanted to play professional basketball for the Women's National Basketball Association after she left high school. In September of 2017, during eighth grade, she took a career interest inventory survey and it showed that she was interested in business careers. 
Based on this and her grades, all A's in algebra, Brittany decided that she wanted to register for Accounting 1 next year. Behavior rubrics show Brittany is still working on developing her ability to accept constructive feedback, which is a skill she will need in a work setting. Data collected during classroom observations showed that Brittany uses deep breathing techniques and that she can accept directives without arguing in four out of five trials. This is an improvement from last year in seventh grade when she was accepting directives in two out of five trials. So let's bring this information about Brittany all together. First, Brittany wanted to be a professional basketball player when she was 12. After taking a career interest inventory at 13, she learned about a new interest. With the support of her IEP team when she was 14, she will take a class to develop post-secondary skills based on her new interest. Data collection shows her current ability to perform a skill she will need at any job. Ongoing assessment and data collection shows Brittany's changes in key transition areas and the IEP team can develop goals based on current information to help her prepare for her future. And if the transition assessment had not begun early, Brittany may never have been aware of her interest in business or in enrolling in an accounting class in high school. She also may not have been aware of the possible long-term impact of her behavior choices. Let's do some reflection on the key concepts of going beyond transition compliance. Students need time to learn new skills, information, and ideas. Skill development is progressive. Transition assessment should be ongoing. The earlier transition is discussed, the more time a student has to develop the necessary skills learn about options, and receive the services he or she will need to be a successful adult. People change their minds. IEPs are individualized to support students. New information is learned by frequent data collection. IEPs are developed based on current data and goals should be written to help students progress to the next level, with the overall goal being to prepare for life after high school. For today's bonus, I'll be sending you links to resources and information on transition compliance and going beyond. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you use this information to help your students. Be sure to check your email for the bonus we just sent over. If this is the first time you've ever seen an episode of Transition Tuesday, click the link below to receive the bonus. Be sure to like and share the video and leave a comment or suggestion for a future episode of Transition Tuesday. Have a great week. See you next Tuesday.